Few actors have truly defined what it is to be a TV star like Michael Landon did. For decades, the man starred on family-friendly programs like Bonanza and Little House on the Prairie, and he also worked as a writer, director, and producer. He was also a fun co-star to be around and knew how to amuse his colleagues with a bunch of jokes or interesting anecdotes. However, underneath the jovial appearance, there was a lot more to Michael Landon's life than most people knew. From his early acting roles to his sometimes difficult life behind the scenes, let's take a look at the life and tragic death of Michael Landon. Michael Landon's childhood was marked by hardship and turmoil. Born Eugene Maurice Orowitz in 1936 to parents of Jewish and Catholic backgrounds, his early years were far from idyllic. His father struggled to make ends meet as a movie publicist, while his mother battled with her own demons, including suicidal thoughts. The constant discord between his parents cast a shadow over Landon's formative years, leaving him to navigate a turbulent home life. As recounted by Entertainment Weekly, the strain of his family's conflicts took a toll on young Landon. He grappled with bedwetting, a common reaction to stress in children, which his mother exacerbated by publicly airing their family's private struggles. Landon's daughter, Cheryl Landon Wilson, shed further light on her father's traumatic upbringing in her book, I Promised My Dad. She recounted a harrowing incident where her grandmother attempted suicide during a family outing at the beach. In a moment of desperation, Landon, despite his own fears and lack of swimming skills, heroically intervened to save his mother from drowning. This pivotal moment deeply impacted Landon, shaping his resolve to chart a different course for his own life. Determined to break the cycle of dysfunction and despair that plagued his family, he vowed to forge his own path and create a better future for himself. His childhood experiences instilled in him a profound determination to overcome adversity and strive for a life of fulfillment and purpose. Mikhail Landon's journey was punctuated by numerous challenges and hardships, shaping the resilient spirit that defined him. From a young age, he grappled with adversity both at school and within the confines of his own home. Landon faced bullying from his peers due to his mixed Jewish heritage, enduring taunts and ostracization that left him feeling isolated and angry. At home, Landon found little solace from the torment he faced at school. His mother, described by his daughter Cheryl Landon Wilson as a bully, created a toxic environment where fear and tension pervaded the household. Wilson paints a vivid picture of the strain within the family dynamic, with Landon's father seemingly powerless to intervene in the face of his wife's domineering behavior. The oppressive atmosphere at home led Landon to seek refuge in solitude, withdrawing into his own inner world to escape the turmoil around him. Wilson recounts how her father retreated into his thoughts, harboring dreams of forging a different path for himself, far removed from the tumult of his upbringing. However, even as he yearned for independence, Landon faced disappointment and humiliation when his father's attempt to secure him a job in Los Angeles ended in failure. In a moment fraught with embarrassment, Landon's aspirations collided with the harsh reality of rejection, fueling his determination to carve out his own destiny on his own terms. Refusing to be beholden to anyone, he resolved to chart his own course, determined to succeed through his own merit and hard work. Despite facing early challenges, his natural athletic abilities shone through from a young age. Renowned for his prowess as a javelin thrower, Landon's athletic prowess earned him recognition and paved the way for opportunities beyond his academic struggles. Following his graduation from high school, Landon's athletic achievements secured him an athletic scholarship to the University of Southern California. Undeterred by his academic setbacks, he seized the chance to further hone his skills while pursuing his passion for sports. During his time at the university, Landon balanced rigorous training with a series of odd jobs to support himself financially. As recounted by Cheryl Landon Wilson in I Promised My Dad, Landon's determination extended beyond the realm of athletics. Despite his athletic pursuits, he harbored a deep-seated fascination with acting, 
and sought to explore this passion alongside his athletic endeavors. However, his university experience was marred by continued bullying and a debilitating injury on the field, prompting him to reassess his priorities. Faced with adversity, Landon made the courageous decision to pivot his focus towards his artistic aspirations. Taking a hiatus from athletics, he immersed himself in his university's speech and drama department. Despite the challenges he encountered, Landon persevered, finding employment in various odd jobs to sustain himself while pursuing his dreams. From working as a babysitter to laboring in a soup factory and later a ribbon factory, Landon demonstrated his unwavering work ethic and commitment to excellence in every endeavor. Mikkel Landon's journey into acting was more serendipitous than planned. While he didn't initially intend to pursue acting as a career, fate had other plans in store for him. As recounted by Cheryl Landon Wilson in I Promised My Dad, Landon's foray into the world of acting began unexpectedly while he was employed at a ribbon factory. During his time at the factory, a colleague approached Landon seeking assistance with an audition for Warner Brothers. Intrigued by the opportunity, Landon agreed to lend a hand and found himself drawn to the art of acting. Despite his burgeoning interest, he continued to prioritize financial stability and took a job at a nearby gas station. Fortune smiled upon Landon when he caught the attention of a studio executive while working at the gas station, who encouraged him to pursue formal acting training. Determined to seize the opportunity, Landon enrolled in acting classes while juggling various odd jobs to make ends meet. In a bold move to reinvent himself for the stage, he adopted the name Michael Landon, plucking it from the pages of a phone book. As he immersed himself in the world of acting, Landon faced the realities of the industry with perseverance and resilience. Despite facing setbacks and enduring the challenges of auditions, he remained steadfast in his pursuit of success. His journey to prominence was marked by persistence as he tirelessly auditioned for roles and accepted small parts until finally securing his breakthrough opportunity in the mid-1950s. In 1957, Michael Landon received his breakthrough opportunity with the horror film I Was a Teenage Werewolf, marking a significant milestone in his career. The film's unconventional storyline and Landon's compelling portrayal of a troubled teenager garnered attention, propelling him into the spotlight. Despite initial reservations about the film's title, Landon embraced the starring role wholeheartedly, recognizing it as an opportunity to showcase his talent. In her book, I Promised My Dad, Cheryl Landon Wilson reflected on her father's humble expectations regarding the film. She recalled that while Landon didn't anticipate much from a movie with such a title, he approached the role with professionalism, knowing it was a chance to further his career. Surprisingly, I Was a Teenage Werewolf later achieved cult status, surpassing expectations and solidifying Landon's presence in the industry. Following the success of I Was a Teenage Werewolf, Landon's career gained momentum as he pursued various roles in films such as High School Confidential, The Legend of Tom Dooley, and an adaptation of Erskine Caldwell's novel God's Little Acre. In 1959, Michael Landon's career soared to new heights when he landed the role of Little Joe in the iconic television series Bonanza. At just 22 years old, Landon embarked on a remarkable journey portraying Little Joe for an impressive 14 years, endearing himself to audiences across the nation. His portrayal of the ideal son within the rustic landscape of Nevada resonated deeply with viewers, solidifying his place as a household name. Initially debuting as the first TV Western broadcast in color, Bonanza surpassed expectations evolving into a cultural phenomenon. Cheryl Landon Wilson, in her book, I Promised My Dad, recounts how the show's popularity soared, especially after NBC began airing it on weekends. By 1964, Bonanza had captured the hearts of audiences, becoming a beloved staple in television history. Michael Landon experienced the profound loss of two close colleagues during his illustrious career, as an original cast member of Bonanza, 
where he portrayed Little Joe Cartwright, Landon worked alongside Dan Blocker, who played his brother, Hoss. Tragically, after the completion of the show's 13th season in 1972, Blocker underwent gallbladder removal surgery. Complications arose, leading to the formation of a blood clot that traveled to his lung, causing his heart to stop. Blocker, aged 43, succumbed to the unforeseen complications of the surgery, leaving behind a void in the Bonanza family. Despite the profound grief, production on Bonanza resumed after a hiatus, with guest star Ken Howard recalling Landon's efforts to uplift the spirits of the cast and crew. Landon's infectious humor served as a source of solace during the challenging times. However, the loss of Blocker weighed heavily on Landon, evident in his emotional speech to the cast and crew as they navigated through the difficult period. Bonanza continued for one more season without Blocker, but his absence was deeply felt by all. The sorrow deepened in 1989, when Michael Landon faced another devastating loss with the passing of his friend and co-star, Victor French, shortly after the conclusion of Highway to Heaven. French's battle with lung cancer, diagnosed only three months earlier, ended tragically. However, Landon believed that it was French's struggle with alcohol addiction that ultimately contributed to his demise, a sentiment echoed by their mutual colleague, Karen Grassel, in her memoir. In 1959, Michael Landon faced a profound loss that shook him to the core. While diligently pursuing his acting career, tragedy struck when his father unexpectedly passed away. Landon's father had a customary routine of enjoying lunch near a theater he managed, where he would always sample the soup of the day. However, on one fateful day, after remarking on the usual quality of the soup, he suffered a sudden and fatal heart attack. The unexpected loss of his father deeply affected Landon, leaving him to grapple with grief and the realization of life's fragility. According to Cheryl Landon Wilson, Landon struggled to come to terms with his father's passing and began to fear that he, too, might meet a similar fate prematurely. Despite the heaviness of his grief, Landon coped in his own unique way, infusing moments of sorrow with humor as a means of processing his emotions. Wilson recounted instances where Landon would playfully mimic a heart attack, adding a touch of comedy to his mourning. Taking on the responsibilities of managing his father's funeral arrangements and ensuring the financial well-being of his mother and sister, Landon shouldered the burdens of loss while continuing to pursue his career in the entertainment industry. However, the pain of his father's death lingered, casting a shadow over his days and making it difficult for him to fully immerse himself in his work. Even as he returned to the set to film, the legend of Tom Dooley, Landon grappled with the weight of grief, navigating the delicate balance between mourning and moving forward with his life. As Michael Landon progressed in his career, he increasingly sought control over his work, a trait that didn't always sit well with his colleagues. When Landon began directing and even writing episodes of Bonanza, his perfectionist tendencies often led to friction with those around him. He held himself to high standards and wasn't afraid to voice his dissatisfaction if he felt that a scene or script didn't meet his expectations. According to David Dortort, the executive producer of Bonanza, Landon's evolution as a director and writer was marked by his tendency to critique the work of others. Dortort noted, Landon quickly developed into a skilled director. However, he also began to scrutinize the work of other Bonanza directors as an actor. The same applied when he transitioned into writing. He would question nearly every aspect of other writers' scripts, leading to escalating tension as time went on. Landon's insistence on perfection earned him a reputation for being arrogant and obstinate in some circles. However, he maintained that his intention was not to assign blame, but rather to take accountability for any shortcomings in an episode. Michael Landon's family life was far from perfect, especially when it came to his romantic relationships. Despite portraying a family-oriented character on the popular show Little House on the Prairie, Landon faced challenges in his own relationships. His first marriage ended in divorce, a result, as described by Pamela Lansden of People, 
of marrying too young. However, it was the end of his second marriage that caused Landon the most distress. He was deeply hurt by assumptions that he left his second wife for a younger woman. Reflecting on this, Landon expressed, You don't end a marriage just to be with someone 20 years younger. There were significant differences and deep-rooted issues that led to the end of that relationship after so many years. I would have done anything to save it, but ultimately, it wasn't possible. Despite the challenges, Landon eventually found happiness in his relationship with Cindy Clerico, who was a makeup artist at the time. Determined to build a lasting family and make up for the losses he experienced earlier in life, Landon even underwent a vasectomy reversal after marrying Clerico. Michael Landon's bond with his daughter Cheryl, whom he adopted after marrying her mother, Marjorie Lynn No, was exceptionally strong. Cheryl, reflecting on her relationship with her father, described being treated like royalty by him. This close relationship would be tested in a profound and tragic way. In 1976, when Cheryl was just 19 years old, she was involved in a devastating car accident in Tucson, Arizona. The accident claimed the lives of three individuals instantly, leaving Cheryl fighting for her own life. She slipped into a coma for four agonizing days following the accident. The outlook for her survival and eventual recovery appeared bleak, as revealed by Landon in a candid interview on The 700 Club in 1982. However, Cheryl's survival against the odds was, in part, attributed to her father's unwavering support and determination. Recalling those critical moments, Cheryl credited her father for willing her back to life. Landon remained steadfastly by her side during her recovery, offering his encouragement and support. Even when medical professionals had little hope, Landon urged his daughter to fight on, instilling in her the strength to endure. Melissa Gilbert shared a special bond with Michael Landon, forged through their time together on the set of Little House on the Prairie. ABC News highlighted Gilbert's admiration for Landon, describing their relationship as close and deepening further following the passing of Gilbert's father in 1976. Their families grew close, often vacationing together, with Gilbert even attending prom with Landon's son, Mike Jr. However, their relationship faced a significant strain when news of Landon's affair with Cindy Clerico emerged. The revelation shattered Gilbert, who, according to I Promised My Dad by Cheryl Landon Wilson, was as shocked as Landon's own family upon learning about the affair. Wilson noted that Gilbert publicly expressed her disappointment, suggesting that Landon's actions contradicted the image of perfection he projected. The affair had a profound impact on Gilbert, causing a rift in her relationship with Landon. Despite maintaining a polite demeanor, their interactions cooled and communication dwindled after the show concluded. It wasn't until 1990 that Gilbert and Landon would reconnect. Despite their estrangement, Gilbert eventually reflected on her on-screen father with warmth and admiration. In 2009, she fondly remembered Landon as an extraordinary individual, praising his talents as an actor, director, and writer, and acknowledging his profound impact on her life. Michael Landon faced a formidable opponent in his battle against cancer a diagnosis that altered the course of his life in April 1991. Despite the gravity of his situation, Landon exhibited remarkable strength and resilience, expressing his unwavering resolve in an interview with Life magazine. Look, there's two things that can happen. I can win or I can lose. And I can handle both, he declared, demonstrating his steadfast attitude towards the challenges ahead. With the support of his family, Landon embarked on a journey of treatment, exploring options such as chemotherapy and experimental therapies in his quest for healing. Throughout his ordeal, Landon leaned on his faith and family for strength, drawing comfort from his belief in God and the unwavering support of his loved ones. He confronted the prospect of death with courage, emphasizing his lack of fear in the face of mortality. So I don't see why I should fear death, and I don't. I don't want to die, and I'm going to fight like hell not to, but I'm not afraid to die, he affirmed, underscoring his resolute determination 
to confront his illness head-on. In the midst of his battle, Landon faced another challenge, the anguish of miscommunication that prevented him from spending precious time with his children during his final weeks. Cheryl Landon Wilson, in her poignant reflection in I Promised My Dad, expressed regret over the misunderstanding that kept her father apart from his children. She lamented the pain and missed opportunities caused by misinformation relayed by Cindy Clerico, fearing that her father may have misunderstood their absence. Michael Landon's passing in July 1991, at the age of 54, sent shockwaves through the entertainment world, leaving countless fans devastated by the loss of a beloved icon. His death reverberated far beyond Hollywood, resonating deeply with admirers around the globe. Even former President Ronald Reagan paid tribute to Landon, acknowledging the profound impact of his courageous battle with cancer on the American public. His tragic battle with cancer touched the hearts of every American, as did his indomitable spirit, remarked Reagan, capturing the sentiment shared by many mourning Landon's passing. The private funeral held in Los Angeles drew a crowd of 500 attendees, a testament to the enduring legacy and widespread affection for the late actor. Among those paying their respects was Melissa Gilbert, Landon's co-star on Little House on the Prairie, who fondly remembered him as a man of integrity and kindness. He was so special and so basically good. With him, you always knew exactly where you stood, Gilbert reflected highlighting the enduring impact of Landon's character and values. Despite the somber circumstances of his death, Landon's enduring legacy endures through his contributions to American television. His iconic roles and creative influence continue to resonate with audiences, ensuring that his memory lives on for generations to come. As noted by People magazine, Landon remained remarkably upbeat in his final days reflecting on his life with gratitude and contentment. I've had a pretty good lick here, he remarked, expressing a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction with the life he had lived. In the final hours before his passing, Michael Landon's presence evoked a mix of emotions, marking a poignant conclusion to his remarkable life. Melissa Gilbert, who had previously experienced a rift with Landon, reconciled with him in his final days. As recounted in her memoir, Prairie Tale, Gilbert visited Landon a week before his death, bracing herself for the sight of a once vibrant figure now weakened by illness. Despite knowing of his cancer diagnosis, Gilbert was taken aback by the stark transformation in Landon's appearance. The robust Pa Ingalls from their Little House days had become a shadow of his former self. His vitality diminished to the point where Gilbert described him as almost invisible. Amidst Landon's declining health, poignant moments of connection and closure unfolded with his loved ones. Surrounded by his nine children and possibly sensing the presence of departed loved ones, Landon experienced moments of profound peace and reconciliation. According to his daughter, Leslie Landon, Michael seemed to glimpse the proverbial light, suggesting a sense of transcendence and acceptance in his final moments. Reports indicate that Landon even engaged in conversation with his late parents, as if preparing to join them in the afterlife. In a touching exchange with his children, Landon conveyed his love and readiness to embark on the next chapter. His final words, You're right. It's time. I love you all, encapsulated his acceptance and affection, offering solace to his grieving family. In his last moments, Landon found solace in the embrace of his wife, Cindy, drawing comfort from her presence as he prepared to journey into eternity. As we reflect on the life and legacy of Michael Landon, we are reminded of the indelible mark he left on the entertainment industry and the hearts of millions. His enduring impact continues to resonate with fans worldwide, inspiring us to cherish our loved ones, embrace life's challenges, and strive for greatness. What aspect of Michael Landon's life or career resonates most with you? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more inspiring stories. See you next time. Bye.